On behalf of the whole summit team, we welcome you here to the Women's International Beer Summit. Had a couple of technical issues, so we're a little bit late. Apologize for that. I'm Melissa McCann, the founder and the director of this little project we've put together. We want to say thank you to our speakers, our moderators, and especially you, our guests. We also want to thank our sponsors, BSG Handcraft, American Homebrewers Association, Imperial Yeast, Amoretti, SoCal Cerveceros, Fermentus, Briefs, and so many breweries. During this time, we'll give you a brief history of the summit, talk about the goals and highlights, give you some navigation tips, introduce and welcome our guests, and then we'll have a toast. The history of the Beer Summit. First of all, I want to bring in Mike Brennan from BSG Handcraft. He should be here in just a second. I can go forth while he's uh, getting on screen. I've been the director of the Queen of Beer for the past few years, and I wanted to keep the momentum going. But we were having trouble with that to keep that connection going with everyone. So this conversation started with Mike Brennan, my friend from uh, Seattle. And we Hi. had our regular on know me uh, Zoom calls, uh, our happy hours. It's a Japanese word for <laughs> online drinking. <laughs> and so we would get together and we would talk. And one of the things that kept coming up is how to hold a competition safely during COVID and how we're going to do that and keep everything going. and. It just wasn't possible. So we came up with this idea to do an online event. And then it became this summit. And then all of a sudden it morphed into this international beer summit. So you definitely Mike. turned it into something quite big, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, good to see you. <laughs> you too. Then we invited some more friends into the conversation and it started growing from there. And we started thinking about what is it we would put together. We wanted something that was interactive for people. We wanted it to be inspiring and educational all at the same time. Then we invited in the Shebrew team from Portland, Oregon, and they joined the party with us. And as we came up with those ideas, we thought about it some more and decided that more importantly, we wanted to know what you wanted, what, what would be something that you would want to see in a summit. So we sent out a survey and seven months later, here we are. So the goals for the summit, empowerment, networking, and education. When we have these questions for you, what's holding you back from what you're doing? How much more can you move forward in, in your career? And what would you tell your younger self? We ask these questions as a speaker, as a, excuse me. We ask those questions of the speakers as well. We wanted this to be the TED talk of the brewing community. Who are you? What do you do? How did you get where you are? Where did you come from and what's next in your career? And we really want you to listen to those stories, not just about their careers, but the whole story. There's wisdom in that journey. Now I want to invite Vicki Olson onto the screen. I'm going to move over so she can get on in here. Oh, Maybe. she's coming. coming. We got to get her over here. I lost my, <laughs> I lost my paper. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. The next goal, of course, was our, our networking goal. And Vicky's a big part of that. Well, Sorry. we're going to squeeze in together when it's time to do the test. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Vicky, how are you? It's good yeah. to see you. Excellent. So what about the diversity? Diversity is so huge to me, and it's just there's so much to learn here. And Mike and I have talked a lot about that as well. And we really want you to be networking with these people, and we want you to contact people that are within the summit. We just have so much to learn from each other, and there's just so much there. Mike? Definitely. You know, I will we'll talk a minute from the, you know, my role at BSG. I'm the uh, North American sales director for the BSG handcraft division. Uh, I know in the past we've spot uh, BSG has sponsored uh, the queen of beer competition for the last couple of years. Uh, as Melissa took the reins and during COVID during this time that we couldn't have, you know, those great competitions to, morph this and turn into what this is now that you're going to be presenting this weekend it's a real privilege for us at bsg uh, handcraft and our global partners like bevy uh to be able to sponsor now part uh, be a sponsor of the women's international brewing summit from a personal standpoint as an individual it's important to me you know how i see the value of diversity as it stands now and where the future of brewing is because the future of brewing is diversity you know uh it's Part of what I'm on here for is to learn so much more about not just the stories that we 
already understand a little bit here in the you know in in the American market where I'm at, but also I I want to learn more about what's going on globally. You know, it's it's learning of of uh, these stories that are shared experiences in other places besides here, and I want to learn more about that myself. And what you've done with you know this is breaking ground, growing that narrative to a global level, and unifying that whole voice of diversity, and really at the end of it, it's highlighting shared experiences. And Absolutely. like I said, I'm here to learn too. There's so many of us that are going to get so much out of this. I want to better understand for, from my perspective, where are companies like BSG, where can we proactively provide strategic support? What does that mean? Whether it means sponsorships like this, uh, backing initiatives uh, of diversity and equality, how can we add our strength, how can we add our strength to this and reach that collective voice? So that's why I'm on here. And that's why I've spent the time with Melissa to uh, at least help it and, and guide from the background of bringing the industry side of the piece and say, here's, here's what we see. How can we bring this forward? What's the venue for that? And that's what this turned out to be. It's like, we, we, I, we couldn't think of a better venue than to back the Women's International Brewing Summit. Thanks, Mike. For sure. So as far as the, the, the sorry, the, the diversity, how am I struggling with that word, diversity? Anyway, we have Pink Boots, past, present, and future. We're so excited to have them as part of this. We have our the founder and the former president talking about past, present, and future. We have Jen Jordan involved in uh, equity and diversity panel that we're going to have. We have Dr. J, who's going to be, she's got a lot to share with you, and I can't wait for you to hear it all. I'm really excited to get on board with her and to get connected and, and doing more with her. And then the equity and diversity panel that I mentioned before, it's just, it's evolved into this greatness that I'm just so proud of and I cannot wait to share it with you. Uh, we have, uh, that started with uh, Casey Helwig out of Imperial Yeast and it just kind of grew from there. And now we just have this fabulous panel of women who are gonna be sharing with you so many things and so many different roles and just how to advocate for yourself. And I'm just, I'm so excited about that. And then our goal of learning, the learning trajectory of women in brewing and your place in it. And there's just so much that we can learn from one another. With that, we have the history of brewing from just the very beginning. What, what did it look like? We have Teresa McCullough from the Smithsonian and the beer history there. And we also have Tara Nuren, who's an author who's wrote a book about the women's place in the brew house. Uh, educational goal. The, that's why we did the interactive boxes for everyone. We wanted you to smell and touch and feel and taste what our speakers are talking about so you can learn from that. We have four different hop samples in the bonus boxes. Uh, first, 300 guests were uh, eligible to receive a bonus box full of interactive supplies. I hope you were one of those that got one of those. And so those uh, hops are in there for that. Uh, the malts are in there. We have some yeast samples in there. And we just have the best of the industry here to talk to you about all those different educational things. Um, the celebration, that's what well, we I are. Was, and <laughs> We're I was, here to celebrate. <laughs> you know, from my standpoint, Melissa, I was so impressed that when your team began outreaching for speakers, the uh, almost unanimous uh, or, or to the person just immediately mm -hmm. stepped up and said yes. Yeah, Absolutely. You, it, it was, was so exciting. It's so exciting. When I when I would tell the, the our speakers what we were trying to do and what we were trying to provide to you, the attendee, they were all all about it. They were in. And so were our sponsors. They were like, what can we do? How do we help you? How do we support this and make this amazing for for everyone? So just thank you. Thank you so much to all of the speakers and the sponsors. For sure. And just to finish up is like we all just we have the same goals it's like we want we all want to be our best self so let's let's all learn together so highlights of the summit the interactive sessions of course the leaders of industry the equity which is our overarching theme and we also have the first international homebrew panel for women i'm just so excited about that so navigation let's talk about that really quickly exhibit hall you can find all your tech support information there, schedules, giveaways, and we also have a special guest. We have uh, Ashley Carter from Beer Stott Lager House. We'll also be pulling in some other um, brewers with that uh, talk time as well. Uh, as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna be emailing them to let them know what time to get in here. I had a lot of last minute people say, hey, how do we support you? What could we do? We wanna be a part of this. And so 
that's what's going on. So our next uh, next guest that's going to be be after us will be VSG Handcraft, our presenting sponsor. They've just been amazing. Pretty much anything I needed, they were there to help us with it, including those bonus boxes for you and just so much support. We just appreciate them so much. We have Matt Bowling, the North American manager. He's going to be introducing a recorded session that they produced just for us. After them will be uh, American Homebrewers Association. They're just another uh, another amazing supporter of us. And we will have Jill Morelli and Jen Blair from there, the governing board of the AHA to help out. Lastly, we have a toast and we're ready to get going. Oh, we get to do that. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, am I live? Okay, you are I live. guess so. You are live. <laughs> it's time for a toast. You All right. That is the uh, North okay. American marketing director for BSG Aircraft. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, out on the opposite end of the coast. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you guys want to do the toast first, or uh, do I, I, th we... I think we should get going with. We're doing I think all your attendees want that. We're too. Cheers. tasting with the Chimay Red, which will be part of the Cicerone session. Which I will pour properly for everybody to, you know, so down the okay. center. We got okay. to have our proper pours. So. Okay, Vicky. I'm will not going to pour uh... a big one because it's uh, 8:15. So. Oh come exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> Vicky has a toast written for us. Oh. Okay, so are y'all ready? Good morning, fellow beer lovers. Let's raise a glass. To dedication to furthering the empowerment and education of brewers and enthusiasts through opportunities for networking, learning, and celebration. Cheers, my friends. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Yeah, um, so I've got a little bit of a video that I'd like to play for everybody. So, um... I first want to just, uh, well, uh, I, I know we're doing a welcome now, but I also want to welcome everybody to this summit and uh, just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to Melissa, Crystal, Michelle, Shauna, Shawnee, everybody that's involved in this event. Uh, I want to reiterate to everyone that's listening that um, everybody that put this summit on is a volunteer. So... Uh, they deserve so much praise for putting this together for everyone. Thank you for, for bringing this industry together. Um, so uh, my name is Matt Bowling. I'm the North American Marketing Manager for BSG Handcraft. We're really thrilled to be a part of this event. Um, you know, uh, the BSG Handcraft is dedicated to... Um, we, we are the um, wholesale supplier to the homebrewing industry. And what we've done is we've actually partnered with one of our uh, supplier partners, Bevy, uh, who are the makers of the Grainfather, to develop this video that highlights all of the ways that Bevy really prioritizes, you know, having women in leadership roles and uh, their passion for the industry. So um, Bevy, for those that don't know, uh, is in New Zealand. So it's about 3 a.m. there. So uh, you've got me to introduce the video. <laughs> um, but you know we're really happy to be showing this and really really excited for the next two days you know I, I, there's such an awesome lineup of speakers I know you're gonna hear from a good friend of mine Julia hers here in a little while who is just a phenomenal speaker and I'm sure we'll have everybody as in this panel be uh, ready to to run through a wall here because <laughs> she's just that engaging um, so we are excited to also be bringing the grandfather uh, uh, is putting together an international panel of women homebrewers tomorrow at 4.15. So we're really excited for that. We've got representatives from New Zealand, Australia, the UK, and Argentina, which I believe this will be the first time that there's ever been a panel of women homebrewers from around the world. So we're really, really excited about that. And we're going to be giving away a grandfather at the end of the summit. So stay tuned for that. Um, and that about wraps it up for me. Again, Thank you to Melissa and her team for putting on this event. I couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of it. I know that Bevy couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of it. And um, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and show this video. I hope that I'm going to do it all right. You think after a year of quarantine, we'd all know how to work these virtual tools. But um, we're going to find out. I hope that it works. Here we go. <laughs> All right, can, is my screen up? It should just be a black screen. Here we yep. go. All right. We're good. All right, and hopefully we can hear that. Yes. All right. 
Hi, I'm Lauren. Um, I have the great pleasure of being the general manager of Bevy and super excited that Bevy is involved in this event through the sponsorship with our grain part of the brand. Um, thanks for letting me have a chance to talk to you and really want to welcome everyone around the world that's participating and also, you know, being part of this movement of not only brewing, um, but also this movement of female involvement in the industry. You might not know much about Bevy and it would be wrong to not take the opportunity to talk to you about this because we're so relevant and passionate, particularly in this home brewing and distilling space. Bevy is an organization of approximately 200 people. We have a large number of sites um, represented globally around the world. So here in New Zealand, Australia, the US, Netherlands and the UK and you know we are bringing and taking home brewing to the world through our distribution network and through the brands that we develop and are um, exceptionally proud about. You know I, I just love this industry, I love the people and I really take great pride in working for, for Bevy as well. And there's a number of reasons for that. You know, Bevy is a, a fantastic organisation with regards to our approach to diversity in general. And, you know, you're going to get a bit of a glimpse in that today. And one of the aspects of diversity that we do focus um, and quite naturally and highly in, which is female involvement in, in this industry. It's fantastic for us to be involved in an event like this because it's just the core of who we are and what we do. And the people that are listening are core to what makes our business tick over. So um, thanks for the opportunity for Bevy to be here as part of this as well. I'll hand over to some of my wonderful colleagues and just wanted to say, have a fantastic event, enjoy yourselves, absorb, absorb the knowledge, learn more and um, really encourage people to share. I, I know there's forums here where people can share and network and um, make the most of it. What a, what a great opportunity. Hi, I'm Sophie, Brand Manager at Grainfather. Uh, we're really excited to be a part of the event this year. Um, we're all about supporting home brewers and we certainly want to do that with females. Behind the Grainfather brand, we're all craft beer enthusiasts and we're all about um, empowering you to explore the uh, craft of home brewing. So whether that's through our equipment, um, such as the G30, the uh, G70 conical fermenters or whether that's through our tools such as the brewing app. We've got a huge um, following of Grainfather users which is great. Uh, we're all really driven internally uh, providing lots of hard work, a uh, high amount of passion um, to keep building our product range and product portfolio to allow you to continue to make great beer at home. My name is Petra Stark. I'm marketing manager with Bevy the company behind the grandfather proud sponsor of the event i'm bernie and i'm the product development manager at bevy so responsible for, for ingredients development this includes um extract kits cider kits wine kits yeast products turbo yeasts pretty much any consumable item will sort of um will pass through through me and my team I'm Kelsey and I am the Customer and Consumer Experience Manager at Bevy and so I manage a team who are the people answering all the customer queries that come through to us. My name is Yulia Mu and I'm Procurement Manager for uh, Bevy Partners. My duty is really make sure that right ingredient in right time and right quality and right place are uh, delivered. I'm Gaylene, I'm Operations Manager in Australia. Um, I run our warehousing operation, which is based in Brisbane. My name's Alison. I've stayed on the customer service side, mm -hmm. speaking to them on a daily basis, taking orders, dealing with problems, deliveries, just basically a point of contact with the shops between me and Bevy. My name's Lou. I am the warehouse supervisor for Bevy Handcraft UK and I'm responsible for the full warehouse from goods in to goods out and everything in between. Nice. I've been working for Bevy for longer than I remember. I started out about 30 odd years ago working for a really small home brew store and then have just moved through the company. I'm a really big beer drinker. Uh, previously I was part of the car industry and when this opportunity came up at Grainfather two years ago I was super excited to be a uh, part of a business that was obviously focused on making great beer and also as an opportunity to help grow um, female representatives in another um, male dominated industry. Where I live in Burton-on-Trent it's very very brewery dominated, huge breweries. When you left school you went to work for one of the breweries 
But I always tended to go to the small family companies. I like the smaller personal feel and then I just grew into the role really. Originally I didn't actually know much about beer and brewing. I wasn't a huge beer drinker myself, um, probably more wine and spirits at the time. But um, since being here, I've certainly developed um, an understanding and appreciation of beer. The more I looked into the industry, the brewing industry and everything else, I realised how much growth there was and how much more growth potential it had as well. It happened just <laughs> by chance, really. I, I was looking for a job where I could apply my uh, skills better. And I wasn't looking for a particular industry. But when I found a position here and I've been accepted, I said, wow, how cool. <laughs> it's not it's not boring anymore. My husband was so excited. So, you know, she has to taste beer. It's her job. <laughs> what a dream job it is. <laughs> I worked in the, the homebrew industry prior to sort of really craft beer becoming a thing so it was just something I've, I've sort of um I discovered on, on along the way as part of the journey you know and I'd always uh, liked beer. Talking to brewers is just as always this level of of passion and excitement about the end product which is really really um fantastic. I'm a maker making things in my blood and the fact that that I'm able to work in an industry that enables makers to express their creativity is absolutely fantastic and I couldn't have asked for a better opportunity. I like creating things and crafting things and I think that it's an industry that attracts those kind of people and also people who are passionate about what they're eating, what they're putting into their body, all of those things which are really important to me. Um, I really enjoy getting back from this industry that we're in. So being a big beer drinker, I uh, obviously love the drinking beer aspect of being in the industry. Um, I also love the fact that the community is really supportive and you get that kind of uh, humble feeling of everyone is on this journey together and ultimately all they're trying to do is get better within the hobby and, and share their creations with family and friends. I think the people, it has changed a lot over the years, but they are like a family. Yeah, everybody's friends. That's that's what I like. It doesn't feel like work. I've developed more of an appreciation and understanding of beer and brewing and the creativity um, that provides people and just the global aspect of it as well, being able to hear from brewers around the world and their different opinions on the same topic. Everyone kind of has a different way of looking at it, different way of doing things. So it's just really cool to have those connections. It's it's serious, but it's also fun. <laughs> I mean, it, it's serious because it's good quality ingredient and it's uh, very uh, strict in terms of our recipe. So it, it, it's fun, it's, it, it's good emotion. I've always uh, had an interest in uh, foods and drinks and kind of, for me, that that's kind of, that's the, the essence of culture, really. I think it's fantastic, you know, that people have got you know, access to all these interesting beers. And there's definitely been challenges at times. Through some experience, you're not taken as seriously. Um, when you're asked about grandfather products, the brewing, brewing process. And the main challenge is probably just that it's not hugely female dominant as an industry. So just the general um, assumptions that maybe us in customer service are, are not the people who actually know a lot about the products and processes um, of beer and brewing. Um, however, we hopefully <laughs> prove that we do have a lot of knowledge around it and we can be the ones there to answer the questions. Being a woman in what was a really male dominated industry back, you know, 20, 30 years ago was super interesting. Having said that, we're, we're quite a strong company and having a lot of women um, at senior management level um, and I think we're really lucky that that's happened. No challenges at all, probably more interest even on uh, like a few exhibitions when I, when I was talking to a few suppliers like Hope Supplies, they were quite impressed with interest uh, from, from women. It has been interesting for me to see changes both within the industry and how we go to market but also around the offerings so the product offerings and also have the benefit of working for an, a global organization we see how these trends move around the world in the past probably 20 30 years ago there were real barriers because of the perception of homebrew um but now and we've done bevy has done so much to get rid of all those old um, stigmas around 
brewing being for um, people who just want cheap alcohol and retired people and brought it way more into the modern realm. I'm quite new to the industry so from my perspective it seems to be getting bigger you know the next generation coming into it and, and trying new flavours and fruit beers and things like that. We've seen a really high increase in people taking up home brewing as a hobby which is awesome and we're really looking forward to supporting all those newbies and help them develop and become the best brewer they can be. Various boundaries have been pushed out and people now have access to smaller items um, that they can brew beer at home with like in apartment buildings. It's great to have so many younger people coming into um, the industry as well. And it is just a lot easier now to make a craft beer. Uh, and there's just so much more choice. What I've seen really is with the advent of, of craft beer, you know, the craft beer kind of scene and movement is that it's, uh, it's brought a lot more women into the industry. What we are seeing in our industry, the, the, the sub-industry of, of home brewing, is the fact that craft beer is so much more accessible to everyone really has brought a renewed interest in home brewing as well, um, which is obviously fantastic. And then that combined with um, uh, this kind of more of a, a sense of people want to make their own food, want to make their own beverage, and combined with the accessibility that the internet provides us, so it's very easy to buy ingredients and equipment, oh, just the, has really um, um, brought us some interesting times where, where we just see great movement, new people coming into the industry, and also, um, you know, hopefully more females coming in, into the into the hobby as well that then potentially uh, could lay the foundation for a more diverse industry in general. This year is going to be the biggest year for product launches so far. So I'm really excited to share what we're, um, we've been doing and we've been busy developing over the past few um, years. And that's all going to be coming very soon. So just follow us on Facebook and on Instagram and be the first to get updates on exciting new products coming your way. All right. Well, that is it for us. You know, again, I just want to thank Melissa and her team for putting this awesome event together. And um, hopefully uh, you guys got a glimpse into all of the, the awesome women that I get to work with every single day. And, um, you know, uh, the, the amount of work that goes into bringing some awesome products to market. So we're really excited to be a part of this event. And with that, I will hand it back over to Melissa or perhaps we're going to Jill. I'm not sure what's next, but again, thank you all for being a part of this and we're excited to be a part of it as well. So have a great next couple of days, everybody. Thank you so much, Matt. That was a fabulous video. We really appreciate it. It was great. It was great. So next we do have American Home Brewers Association and uh, Jill Morelli and Jen Blair. Hi. There's Jill. <laughs> Hi, Jill. Hi. Good morning. So glad to have you with us. Oh, thanks. We Good should have you. Jen coming. Yay, there's our Jen, hey, too. Hey, Jen. So excited to have you two here. I still have beer, so cheers again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just have water. That's all right. That's all right. Cheers. Water is a beverage as well. <laughs> and that's how the beer starts. So. Great. So, Crystal, you can take me down and let's have a Jill and Jen, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Jill Marilli, and I'm a volunteer serving as the chair for the American Home Brewers Association. Jen, why don't you give yourself a quick intro? Sure. I'm Jen Blair. I'm on the governing committee, and I just got reelected to my second term with the GC. So thank you, everyone, for your support. I um, I know I had a lot of uh, just a ton of support from women in the home brewing community. So I definitely appreciate yeah. that. Cool. Jen will be talking a little bit more in our intro, but first I really just wanted to say that the American Homebrewers Association is truly honored to be a sponsor of this inaugural event. Uh, on the governing committee, and, and the American Homebrewers Association is a homebrewer, so, so our board of directors is really called a governing committee because we're supported by the Brewers Association. So we get this awesome opportunity to interact with professional brewers who 
we all know started as home brewers, a good gravy, right, Jen? Right. <laughs> so, so I'll share a little bit more about AHA in a moment, but right now I just wanted to, to personally share, like we all have been doing, how excited we are to gather together. And I might be one of the few that maybe is a little okay with the fact that we're in a virtual environment, because I know for a fact, I probably wouldn't make it to one session. Jen, myself, all of the others, we'd be out in the hall interacting with each of you, swapping recipes, swapping tips of, you know, how do you get your brew day done efficiently, but also get all the household stuff done or get your major work done. By day, I'm a civil engineer and I work in the construction industry. And I finally learned how I can do a weekday brew when I get home, because the minute I walk through the garage door, I turn the water on and I can get the brew done before the next day. So we've all learned how to work these things into our daily life. But for you to come, take some time out, learn, absorb, and continue to promote your craft, your interest in the beer industry, in the beer hobby, and just in who we are together as women is really, I'm honored to be with you. And yes, I'd much rather be in person. But just one short thing that for me personally and where I come to all this and where I come to my leadership with AHA as a volunteer is that beer might technically be water, grain, hops and yeast. But for me, for Jen, for everybody at the AHA, it's about community. It really is a community that shares, that supports and gives back too. And whether it's if you're here as a hobbyist, if you're here as a professional or somewhere in, in the middle of all that interest, we really are honored to be part of your community. And I personally am just really excited to um, spend the next couple days with you improving my hobby. Um, it's a, I thank you really for being here. And, um, and it's funny too, because even when you're presenting, I get distracted by all the comments. That's where we're <laughs> community, right. That's where our community is today. And I'm, I'm just privileged to be part of it. So, so we're really excited because Jen and I get to give you a gift today. Some of you may know that when you registered, you uh, received the first 300 registrants, I believe, um, were to receive an, a, a digital membership to the American Homebrewers Association. Well, guess what? Everybody's getting one. So, yay, you get a, you know, I'm feeling, like, yay, I'm Oprah. <laughs> then you get a membership and you get a membership. So it'll be online. It'll come through your email in the next week and we'll be working with the association. If you have any troubles at all, use the contact information for, through um, the summit and we'll make it happen. But give us about a week. Um, the staff that we have is so extraordinary and there's so many fabulous people like you. So I'm going to ask our tech person to fire up our slides because unlike Matt, I wasn't going to take a risk on it not working. I'm going to whip through it really quick. We're all going to get a membership to this. Um, uh, even though it says American, we're international. So let's just say that we're the Homebrewers Association. And so while she's bringing up the slides, I'm just going to go ahead and, and give you a couple highlights. There we go. Let's go to that next slide. Quickly, the American Homebrewers Association does reside its headquarters in Boulder, Colorado. Great place for beer. We are um, federally, we're considered a 501c6. It's an education component. We're education and we're advocacy. And we are a subsidiary of the Brewers Association, as I mentioned earlier. We're pretty young. We're only established in 78, but there's amazing amounts of knowledge. And we, ho we host, not only do we provide advocacy, but we host energetic events for you to attend in person or virtually. Next slide. One of the best things that you have on the next slide, we'll show some pictures. It'll catch up. So in any case, this is our Zymergy magazine. It's one of the greatest things that we offer. It really is a high class, world-class publication and you'll have full access to that online. Additionally, we've been working through, especially during COVID time, it gave us more time to catalog all the articles. So if you wanna look up something on Mead, you'll be able to just search on Mead and get a myriad of articles and information. Next slide. I'm gonna work through these quickly. I want us to get to Julia. All right, so for those, um, any of you worldwide can download our app, the Brew Guru app. And if you're in the US and there are some deals, I believe now starting in Canada too, yay. I'm half Canadian, so yay. Um, uh, there are deals there at different breweries across the nation, but it also identifies where some of those breweries are. So download that Brew Guru app. You can do that even without being, without your membership. 
our homebrewers power in numbers is really where we're at. Next slide. You're you are smart. You're you're staying with me, Madam Technical. <laughs> I love you. Um, uh, the industry as a whole is just continuing to grow. And while we've had seen a lot of industries stutter step during uh, the last year and a half, still people being at home, the home brewing industry has really grown. We've had more time to pay attention to that. And so we hope we look forward to capitalizing on that. We do orient towards clubs with the AHA. But as I mentioned, Jen and I are on this governing committee. We found that only about half our members are in clubs. And so in the, over the next year or two, you'll see a lot more online content and orienting towards membership as a whole. And in fact, the best part about our governing committee, over half of the 14 members are women. And so now the diversity on how we're delivering and how we're presenting information will could only continue to increase. Next slide. Either one, I won't touch as heavily on this, but you can learn more about it online, but we really seek to promote and protect home brewing in the United States. And we've been providing advice internationally as needed. And so on the next slide, you'll see that we do it in three different ways. We promote it through media outreach, through our online presence, and then all of our events. We promote things like learn to homebrew day or even big brew is our big one to gather together with your friends and brew together of course right now please gather together appropriately wear masks whatever it is that your country is following and then um, in our legislative affairs on the next slide you'll see that as i mentioned especially through the u.s it was only back in 2013 that the last state legalized homebrewing. Now, I don't know what it's like in your country, but that was a big deal. It was a leftover from our prohibition days of 1920. And while none of us might have been around at that time, it probably was pretty dry, don't you think? And then finally, with our AHA, we have a lot of members only events. You can read about that on our website. If you're ever here, um, the Great American Beer Festival will be in person again someday. We look forward to gathering with all of you. And then finally, on the next slide, with our national homebrew competition, that is one of our best events. That is an international event. So for wherever you're at, please consider entering your beer. Get a chance to show you, show your, let your, let it shine. I love our Queen of Beer competition. I love She Brew. Um, this is an opportunity to be recognized it just in, in another arena. And in fact, that picture right there is a member of another member of our governing committee. And that's when he received the Mead Maker of the Year Award. It was pretty exciting. So you can see the data on here that's that's here. But last in 19, see, 2019, that's when we had 19 countries represented in that competition. And the reason why I'm highlighting it is because they are starting the judging today uh, in Boulder, Colorado. So we had to suspend the competition last year, but it's happening this year. Yay, I'm excited. All right, and then back onto your free membership. This next slide will show is that you'll find online a lot of recipes, a lot of coaching, videos, and guidance. And we always try and repost some of the award-winning recipes so that it can help you improve your brewing skills. All right, just a couple more. We can skip the next slide. And on the monthly membership, obviously that first section, pfft, ignore it. It's free, you're worth it. And you'll, it'll give you access to all this members only content online. And um, it'll give you um, access to what the information that you need. And there's also boards and online interactive events that you'll find too over the next year. All right, so I powered through that, but here's the bottom line. Thank you so much for being here, for caring about yourself enough to gather information about something that means a lot to you and being part of this community because together we're better, way better. But I asked Jen to join me today, um, not only because she was a governing committee member, but because she really represents a, a diverse uh, voice for women in the brewing industry, both home brewing and professional. Jen, will you share yourself a little bit with everybody? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I definitely can, Jill. And um, I appreciate all that, particularly as someone who was born in 1980, hearing somebody say that 1978 is young was fantastic. Um, and uh, I will 
I'll, I will be presenting later this afternoon on beer judging with my friend Loy. So you'll hear a little bit more about kind of my professional career then. So while I have the time this morning, I really wanted to talk to you about my homebrewing journey and how it's really impacted my life and my career because I don't actually get the opportunity very often to look back and talk about how important homebrewing has been to me within, you know, within my career path. Um, so I began homebrewing in 2014, really not all that long ago. And my my boyfriend, now husband at the time, or my boyfriend at the time, now husband presently, <laughs> we shared a love of beer and he was learning to homebrew from one of his friends. So two things that I really enjoy doing are cooking and learning that how behind the why. Uh, so brewing was really a natural fit for me to learn to start learning about. And, you know, I'm also not, I don't consider myself to be a terribly um, scientifically minded person. So that's been a really good challenge for me, uh, working through all of those hows. Uh, I drove, dove straight into all grain brewing, but I do uh, extract brews every once in a while. I'm actually teaching a class next month on extract home brewing for beginners. And the very first beer I ever brewed was uh, my very first beer. My very first recipe was a pale ale bittered with marigolds rather than hops. Um, it was way too bitter, uh, but it was mine. It was my recipe. I came up with it, uh, so I loved it. Although I'm sure if I could go back in time and taste it now, I probably wouldn't be quite as impressed with it. And, you know, one thing I started doing, I, I did almost as soon as I started home brewing was join the AHA. And I really joined because at the time I wanted to have a re reputable resource to get information about brewing, about equipment, and about recipes. And Jill touched on all of those things. I will say that uh, the recipes is absolutely huge and there are a ton of really great ways to use those recipes. But as you know, as we're all aware, information on the internet can be uh, dubious. Uh, it can also often be incorrect or incomplete. So the AHA website, using that as my my main resource, really gave me a sense of confidence in the information that I was learning. Uh, so you know, homebrewing has been just an integral part of. Uh, turning this hobby and passion into a full-time job um, and then some. I'm, I'm all beer all the time and homebrewing has been huge for that. It allowed me and continues to allow me to interact with the, the brewing process on a much deeper level than just reading books. Reading books is great, um, but actually doing it really helped me learn more about that and really develop my relationship with raw ingredients and how they interact to form a finished beer. Uh, so learning both of those lessons really gave me confidence as not only a home brewer, but also a professional brewer, as a beer judge, as an advanced Cicerone. Uh, so if you're interested in pursuing any of those paths that I just mentioned, home brewing is one of the most important, most crucial actions you can do to get you farther down those paths and closer to those goals. And, you know, as women within the brewing industry, learning how to make beer is another tool that we have to be able to grow within the industry. You know, women aren't afforded the same level of skill assumption that men are. And homebrewing can not only build your brewing and process ingredient uh, skill set, but it can also help you bridge that skill assumption gap. Uh, so I'll, I'll wrap up with this by saying, you know, as you listen to all of the, the amazing presenters this weekend, uh, please keep in mind that all of this, all of what you're going to hear is also, is also accessible to you. And I'm willing to bet that you probably won't hear from anybody this weekend who says that they have accomplished what they've accomplished by waiting for someone to ask them if they wanted these opportunities, right? Your opportunities and your path won't look the same as mine. It won't look the same probably as anyone else's, but when you have an idea of where you want to go, you'll be able to recognize those opportunities that will help you get there when you see them. It will also be really important to help you recognize what aren't going to be opportunities to get you where you want to go. So if you're wondering where your space is within the brewing industry, you have ample opportunities this weekend to learn from women who have created their spaces within the industry. So use us as your inspiration. Ask questions, ask about what resources they use. Continue those conversations after this. As Melissa said, part of this is building that network. And you know, if you feel like you don't have a, a resource in the brewing community, I feel like you'll probably feel a lot differently after this weekend. Um, but you know, you can also 
know that consider me a resource, reach out to me, I can help point you in the right direction. And I'm sure most of the women here this weekend are willing to do the same. And also remember going back to the accessibility that this information, you know, the knowledge that I have isn't inherent. Um, it's not all based on personal skill set. We get our information from somewhere. So ask where that knowledge came from, ask where you can find it. And if you, the space that you think you want within the industry doesn't exist, create it. Because at the end of the day, we don't change the brewing industry by bending ourselves to fit it, right? We change the brewing industry by bending it to fit us. And so with all that being said, I will pass it back to Jill Great. and thank you everyone for uh, this weekend. I'm super excited about it. Great, Thank thanks. So and so, Melissa, just on on uh, back on the screen. So, just to wrap up for the American Homebrewers Association, for me as a ten year home brewer, meeting someone like Jen made a big difference. So, please use that <laughs> this platform today. I, I called her in the middle of a brew the other day, going, "I think I screwed up my stuff mash." <laughs> <laughs> so, so use that connection, use use what's here today and pull this towards you. So my challenge to each of you is when you attend a session, look, there's going to be a lot of information coming your way. Just take one thing, one thing out of each session and yes. then try to work that into your life. And at the end of the day you're, or at the end of the weekend, you're going to accumulate 12. Just pick three things. And out of those three things, please make sure you share it with at least one other woman. You know, the fact that we support each other is how we increase numbers. And it doesn't matter that, you know, the, that the uh, you might see a higher percentage of, of men, you know, so many want to help us, but it's like, this weekend's about us and taking care of each other. Melissa, again, thank you for letting American Homebrewers Association, um, you know, I know we're personal friends, um, mm -hmm. but it's so, been so fun being involved with AHA for Jen and I and for all of the other people uh, in AHA to support this and we'll move forward so you can get back on time. <laughs> oh, we're, we're great. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for introducing me to Jen. I just really appreciated everything <laughs> she had to say. And, my gosh, I'm ready to go brew. <laughs> yeah, girl. All right. I'm Thanks, everybody. Excited. Really appreciate Thanks, everyone. You. Stay in touch. Take care. So we're noticing a couple of little housekeeping things. Speakers, if you're on here, please make sure you're going to your session so that you can be invited into the green room so that we can get you ready and make sure all of your equipment's working. We're finding that we lost our keynote speaker there for a minute, but it was because she didn't know to go there. So we wanna be sure all the speakers know, go to your session and then you'll be invited in from there. And also I forgot to mention the scholarships. There's scholarships on our website, just go there. You can apply for any of them. There's nothing required in order to do that and be sure you're picking out the one you want. And uh, we wanna be sure that we get as many people in there as possible. Let me think, was there anything else we needed to add before Julia came up? I don't remember. I'll have to think about that, but Julia should be up here in just a second. Why don't you go ahead and introduce her and I'll bring her up. Well, I shall do that. Julia is an amazing woman, a beer advocate, a woman ad advocate. She's just so incredible as an educator and a speaker. And I'm just so excited to share her with you if you don't know her. Uh, I met her just through other people and online, and I, I found her as a keynote speaker, and that was that. And we, I brought her her name to the team, and everybody said, "Oh yes, let's do that." And so here she is, and I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Can you hear me, Melissa, and everybody? Absolutely. Yep. You're good to go. Right on. And welcome to my home in Lyons, Colorado. Uh, and I am so honored to be here, and I am going to get you guys fired up and why you're spending your Saturday and the next few days at this amazing conference that's bringing us all together. And we're here first and foremost for beer, not because we're women, right? That's the secondary piece. We tend to lead with that so much. But I do wanna get you guys to remember one thing from my talk, my last name. Now say my last name with me, it is hers, right? And the way to remember my last name is remember that that is opposite of his. Hers opposite of his. And what a great lead in to talk about, right? Melissa's laughing. Right. 
And Melissa, I'm going to um, start off the morning with one of the um, almost 500 Pink Boots collab beers that was recently made um, and brewed for International Women's Day. And this one's from Cape May out of New Jersey, where the women at Cape May did everything for this beer, from the brewing and the recipe formulation to the packaging and the label design. Um, and it's a beautiful Belgian-style blonde ale with incredible notes of um, uh, added uh, peaches and apricots. And I just want to make sure that we all get in the mood because any time, any day is a good time for a beer, right? Indeed, indeed. So, so Julia, I'm going to go ahead and get off screen and it is take it away. <laughs> all right. We'll see you in a little bit, Melissa. And I Take want care. to talk today a little bit about the theme that was alluded to if you watch the introduction of what would we tell our younger selves? And I'm going to get to that. We all have our story, by the way, of how we got into beer. And it does tie to some of my younger self. When I was um, little, I grew up in the Maryland, D.C. area, and I was always stockpiling a shoe box and then multiple shoe boxes and lunch boxes and any kind of box I could get with lotions and potions and soaps. And sensory wise, from day one, I think I was into textures and aromas. And then I developed later with my dad's encouragement into food and flavor on that side of things. And that really was kind of an indicator that I just kind of might get into beer, right? And my brother, before I was 10 years old, had a beer can collection. DC area, um, for any of you that have been around for a while, uh, we had an amazing bar called the Brick Skeller, which is now the Beer Baron. And it had over 500 beers on the menu, all bottled and canned, not draft. And so before I was 10, my parents were taking us to the Brick Skeller and showing us beer from different styles in different types of packages with different stories. And they were eating it around food and they were helping my brother get his beer can collection. But meanwhile, I'm not even 10 years old thinking about different beers for different occasions. And I really think that set the stage. When I went to college, I first home brewed and I brewed Scottish ale and my home brewing roots led to my career today. So I'm here to remind that if you are into brewing or you were into brewing, get back into brewing. The resources that is, are there as, as was just explained and shared and everyone has a free membership to American Home Brewers Association. And what a gift that is, because when I got out of college, by the way, I worked at CNN, Washington, D.C. Bureau as a broadcast journalism major. Incredible big picture thinking and experience, but it wasn't for me. And so I decided to quit and I went on a cross country trip for one year with my friend Christy, who also quit. We lived off of $15 a day. We did national parks and BLM land. And when we didn't know anyone in town and didn't know where to go, we'd go to the brew pubs. And my love of beer has always brought me to places of people that I could connect with. And that spirit still lives on today. And then I get back from my trip. I live in Colorado where we are home to the Great American Beer Festival. Um, and I had volunteered on that trip at the GABF when we were passing through Denver. So I already had the GABF and the Brewers Association and the American Association, American Home Brewers Association on my mind. And so after volunteering, I wanted to get to know the organization more. I saw a beer festival in Beaver Creek where the Charlie Papazian, who actually out this window lives that maybe 15 minutes from me. Um, and Charlie Papazian's the founder and past president of the Brewers Association and created the American Home Brewers Association. And Charlie picked my name out of a hat out of over 300 plus people at that beer festival. And I won a membership to the American Homebrewers Association. And that's when Zymergy Magazine and homebrewing and the knowledge started to up my game in brewing. And what I noticed is when I brewed beer and handed it to people, it brought me on an even playing field with them. As soon as we were discussing the sensory aspects of that beer, we were in an equal environment and one that we could converse with, with nothing but um, a uh, approachability and connection to each other in such a positive way. Um, you know, and I've had a great career um, and it's still going strong. Um, I am I am now still advising to, to many breweries and, and small business and that matters to me a lot. 
Um, I'm fortunate enough to be in a movie right now. Beermovie.org is an incredible film where I'm the featured home brewer in a international movie on beer. And we're brewing on my patio um, a few yards that way. And we brewed a, a choke cherry Baltic quarter red, which is um, kind of a crazy uh, uh, twist. So I really ended up calling it a, um, a Baltic red choke cherry beer from the regular base of the, uh, the Baltic quarter style, but not as much roasted malt and put the choke cherries in, gave it some tannins. And in that movie, I'm brewing that beer um, and talking about my love of home brewing and my love of supporting craft brewers. And then things happen, right? COVID happens. Um, layoff happens. Uh, you know, uh, many of us have gone through changes and as long as we have health, uh, we do have wealth and if we can pay our bills, then we can get at what matters to us for our passion projects. And so one of that led to me, um, led me to my campaign, my grassroots campaign called Gray for Good for All Womanhood. And you can go to grayforgood.com and, and, and get to know the campaign. It's all about feeling empowered enough to let my hair go gray. And I went through the pain and predicament of being a woman coming of age. I am 52 years strong now, right? I am coming into my prime. I am more wise, more smart, more grounded than ever before. But putting my hair in the situation of not being colored and being colored, felt uncomfortable on both sides. And so last summer, after I had lost my job and I went on you know, a Vision Quest trip across the country in my pop-up camper, I really thought about what mattered to me. And what mattered to me was empowering myself and other women. And what I realized in my research is, is that, you know, gender equality is way behind the times. I'm not stating anything to you all that you don't recognize, right? But basically, the global gender, gender um, gap report, which involved 149 countries um, looking at their social and economic disparities for women compared to men, tell us that it's going to take 208 years for us to get to gender equality. That is crazy talk, right? So my gray for good for all womanhood campaign encourages women as they go gray to be celebrated. I'm not about shaming women that do color, but I'm asking the world to no longer shame women like me that don't. And I'm going to take that savings, right? I am no longer going to spend more than $400 a year, give or take, on coloring my hair. And I'm taking that savings and I'm donating it to any one of the woman or girls causes that matters to me most. And the research is there to show us, according to the Women's Philanthropy Institute that got funding from the Melinda Gates Foundation to do a study. And in 2017, they identified in the United States um, almost 50,000 organizations of the 1.4 million charitable organizations in the U.S. are devoted or were devoted in 2017 to women and girls. But that group of almost 50,000 organizations out of the 1.4 million, which is a little over 3%, only got 1.6% of all the giving. Let me say that again. The women and girls causes in the United States only received 1.6% of all the giving. So that to me was it. I created the campaign, Great for Good for All Womanhood. And I said, I want women to be able to say, I graved, I, I grade, I gave, and I say I saved and I gave. And so when they save and give to women and girls causes, I feel like I'm doing my part to get the world to a better place because we definitely want to have women be lifted up and be supported. And here's the deal. As soon as we start talking about that we're women in beer, right? Um, the conversation gets hijacked. I don't want to be a woman in beer. I want to be a person in beer, a professional in beer, an individual in beer, right? Women identified individuals, we don't want to lead with our gender. We just want to be our gender and use that as our approach and ninja power to the world. Is this resonating with any of you? So I'm here to consent, cons have you consider when we talk about being women in beer, yes, let's use the collective powwow to encourage each other, celebrate each other, and lift each other up. But when the conversation comes to us and it leads with the fact that we are women in beer, we need to hijack and, and re-pivot that conversation right back and talk about beer itself and the professional skill set that we have and what we bring to the table to the beverage of beer as home brewers, as professional brewers, as allied trade that support the industry. 
So remember that. And definitely, I would, I would say we do not want things to, uh, to get hijacked in that way. Um, maybe in our lifetime, we'll be fortunate enough to not just be considered women first, but individuals first. And that's when it gets to a more equal world. And I'll remind you, right, less than 25 percent of Congress um, are women. Um, May 2020 statistic, only 7 percent of the CEOs from Fortune 500 companies are women. These statistics are staggeringly um, upsetting. And we are in a feel good environment and a refreshing reckoning. And part of my gray for good for all womanhood, um, and now I'm going to wrap a little for you from my lyrical poem video, um, really brings the lyrics to life of, you know, why we got to color, why we got to try, why we got to cover up what's real and not a lie. Don't I got that aura? Don't I got that vibe? Don't we get to celebrate every year that I'm alive? Mothers, daughters, girlfriends, too. If we had our way, we'd have lots of pants pockets. Gray would be okay. And we'd have equal pay. And these are some of the lyrics that I made um, into a, a super fun video at grayforgood.com. And, uh, you know, I want to read you some quotes now. And so some of these quotes, by the way, in the last year where we've all felt pain, but we've all felt closer connected to each other, yet we've all felt more loneliness, right? And so I thought it would be empowering. And these are some of the um, nuggets that I wish I had told my younger self that I now know at 52. And I'm going to try to keep these top of mind. So I'm proud to share these with you all. And then maybe we can go to a little bit of chat um, if we have any time left. You know, but starting um, before COVID, September 2019, and I am looking at, and I will show you the list of quotes um, from my downstairs wall, and I exercise in the morning, and I have a whiteboard, and if something comes to me, I write it down, and I, I denote the month that it resonated with me. So in September 2019, my quote was, third eyed sharpened, meaning pay attention to what's around me. Don't just assume that I am aware of everything. Really dial into the moment of now. Um, December 2019, provide solutions, right? Don't just complain. Don't get too focused on the noise and chatter in your head, right? You are always going to have that voice in your head. There's multiple voices. Which one do you pay attention to? Which one do you fuel? Which one do you feed? I want to feed the one that's positive and the one that knows my intention the most because my intentions are true and I trust my intentions and integrity. January 2020, trust over suspicion. Um, you know, suspicious. We can write a story about those around us. Let's trust each other instead. 320, right? Literally the month that my entire team at the Brewers Association was laid off. Everything is impermanent. Reminding myself that no matter what job you're in, no matter what relationship you're in, everything is impermanent. So be in the moment of now and appreciate what you do have and make the most of it each moment that you pay attention to that. Um, 420, April 20, be curious about the uncomfortable. Lots of uncomfortable going on now that COVID's hitting, you know, our culture and our society. Um, things were changing. May 20th, uh, May 2020, still blooming, still growing, still contributing, still blossoming. Um, July 2020, hashtag fuck COVID, uh, I got laid off, right? Um, I go into a stage of grief. Uh, 8 2020, I get more grounded and I remember that I have so much great going for me. So the quote is, let's go, dot, dot, dot. Then 9 20, um, you know, practice the pause, uh, meet the moment. That's what I'm talking about is slowing down and meeting the moment. Um, 10 20, let go of expectations. You have expectations, you might get disappointed, right? Take things as they come and then work with what you are given. Um, by the way, instead of when things are not going well, um, speaking up, if speaking up doesn't, uh, doesn't work out, take a stand. That is one step more deeply than speaking up. And taking a stand is uh, a risk, but without risk, there is no reward. Um, I'm getting close to the end of my quotes here. Uh, you know, January 2021, um, we are complete as is. That is important. You are enough. We are enough. Each one of us was born enough with what we have. Um, lots of quotes in February. Uh, find the strengths um, you know, in, in my surroundings. Um, uh, my day, my way, right? You control your, uh, your destiny. Manifest it and make it so. Whatever you put into motion is what follows. Where um, you know, attention goes, energy, energy flows, and that's important. Um, and then March 2021 uh, was, you know, 
Uh, freedom is gifted by another. Uh, liberation comes from within. That is not my quote. I was, it was shared with me. And that one is a huge one, a huge one to leave you all with. Um, and so I'm just pleased uh, as heck to hear uh, that you all are, are, are and we are going to be meeting in the next um, few days. Um, I'm honored to uh, learn from some of our amazing speakers that will follow me. Um, and, uh, you know, women, women are here for each other, um, mentor each other, reach out to each other, coach each other. Do not be shy to share with each other and encourage men around you to use us as women as their mentors, too, as their guides, as their coaches. Um, I'm raising two young men. I'm married to a, a, an amazing man. Um, you know, we have all power to uh, and strength to gain from each other. Um, and I'm going to bring it back to the bedroom, beverage of beer right now. Um, and as we learn from each other, uh, we learn more about ourselves, right? And beer teaches me about myself. It doesn't just teach me geography, history, uh, about ingredients and culture. Um, but it teaches me about myself and what I pay attention to, what my likes and dislikes are, where my bias lies that I need to shed, um, and a whole host of other things. So I'll wrap it up with that real quick. And I want to just say, you know, um, beer of the woman, Cape May, you guys are, are killing it. Way to go. I want to visit that brewery one day. Um, cheers to every single one of you and uh, enjoy your brewing and your beer journey. I toast you and take care. And that's all I got. There was a lot of chat that flew by while I, uh, while I did what I did in a practice form of slowing down that was slower than normal, which is kind of funny because it was probably pretty fast in how I, I, I spoke. But Melissa, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, I think I'm, I'm good. Do you want me to hang out or we'll transition the baton to the next talk? I think we're ready. To, it looks like we have time for just a tiny break, and then we'll get started with our next sessions. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we, we, so do, we do have just one question, actually, for Julia. Okay. So okay. if you don't mind answering it, we've got one. Um, Jamie wants to know, how do you overcome the imposter syndrome in the beer world? Um, what a great question. Uh, we all deal with that. Uh, that is not gender specific. Um, and, you know, there's the fake it till you make it, which is certainly a good cheat. Um, but you are not an imposter in your own desires, in your own knowledge, in what you share. You are not an imposter. So basically, it, a little deeper than fake it till you make it is I would tell that part of yourself that thinks you're being an imposter that you're not. And if somebody else is giving you a vibe around you that you're being an imposter, don't buy into their view of you. You construct their view of you by surpassing that story that you're writing in your head. None of us are imposters. Everyone's learning every single day, no matter the top leader or, or the person that's your neighbor down the street. So please um, do not fuel that part of yourself. Recognize when that part of yourself is trying to drive who you are, but don't listen to it. That's right. There is one more question for you. Any tips to interrupt the mansplainers that, that are polite-ish? You know, microaggression <laughs> and whatnot is, uh, is a thing. Uh, I've been getting educated in so many arenas of, of diversity and inclusion and equity, and microaggressions happen all the time. Um, and when somebody is mansplaining you, that is a form of microaggression. And yes. the best you can do, and... Um, you know, you, you, you might not get received very well, is to interrupt and, and cause a pause in that approach of behavior um, and, and call the individual uh, that is explaining you um, on it. Excuse me, I'd like to finish what I was saying. I'd love to hear what you have to say as soon as I'm done talking. Um, I think what you just said is what I had said but, you know, let me say it back to you. Is this what you are getting from me? And thank you then for reiterating what I just shared with you. If I'm being explained something or explained, which happens a lot, um, and I, you know, we, I practice this with my kids and, and husband at home too, uh, I stop the conversation and I try to bring how that made me feel into it. And if I get a brick wall, then, uh, then I try again the next time. Um, and, and eventually if somebody isn't listening, then I just, I won't interface with that individual if it's, if it's a pattern of behavior. Excellent. I think that answers all of our questions for you. Did anyone else have, 
any other questions that you'd like to ask Julia, we can pop them into the from the chat over into the question section. Okay. I think we're Unless okay. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I think we have a moment for a little break before our next session start. Um, because I think we start again at 9.30 with our next talk. So I think we can just, um, any questions for me? We can do that now if you have any. I doubt it, but I don't know we could do that. So, Melissa, how do you feel about how many um, people are attending and the response you've been getting in the universe to uh, this event? It's pretty overwhelming the support that I've I've gotten. I, I'm I love how many people are here. I I can't wait to share the recorded sessions with more people. We will be offering a discount on that since it won't be live for people. And so we'll be starting that later. Um, I just but there's sponsors that came in later, even they were just like, hey, how can we be a part of this? And it's like, mm, we're already going forward. Let's talk about next year. And so there's several conversations that I need to have uh, next week with some other sponsors that want to come in and support us as well. So, so proud of AHA and BSG and how they've supported us. It's basically, they said, what can we do and how can we do that? And it was just like, carte blanche you know you tell us what you need and we'll do our best to make it happen and they've just been and that's how it's been the the product that bsg sent for those bonus boxes was just astounding i said we need hops for the the hop sensory with emily del bell done packaged for us and sent uh then our new zealand hop consortium who'll be talking on sunday they needed hops last minute and they made it happen. And so we have those in the bonus boxes as well. It's just been, it's been incredible. There is one question down here. Let me grab it. Um, oh, that's how do I feel about the numbers from this event? That's what I just talked about. Yep. So I'm just, yeah, it's been, I'm just so excited. And I love the energy in the chat and just the people and their, their talk. It's just, I'm just so excited to see that and all of the people interacting, that's what I wanted. I wanted that networking to happen. And this is where we we meet our people and, and we just learn so much from each other. I love it, so. Melissa, what would you tell your younger Melissa, self? I got one more. Oh, uh, um, after she, I wanna hear this answer and then we'll go. What would I tell my younger self? I would tell my younger self, you know more than you know, you, you know more than you think you know, and you're stronger than you think you are. That's great. Mm -hmm. That that would be what I would say. Um, and yes, you will be able to view sessions that we missed after the summit. They will be available on replay. And you can always navigate through all, all of the sessions up top under the schedule bar and find the session you would like to be attending. Right. Julia, what did you just hold up? I want to see it. Um, I had shared when I spoke that I would show the whiteboard as I work out. Uh-huh. And every, everything you just said, I would want you to write that down and keep it front and center for those days where you're, the other part of you isn't believing it. Um, and that was a great answer. I loved it, Melissa. I have one at work and I don't have it memorized. And it's it's a it's a woman with a crown and it's tilted just a bit. And, and it, the gist of it is when things get tough, don't forget who you are, straighten your crown and move on. And that's basically what it says. So, and that's, I kind of live by that. And I do have imposter syndrome here and there. And like this morning at 7.55, I'm like, mm, I can't do this. This is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then I have Jill Mor Morelli and Mike Brennan and Matt Bowling and my friend Vicki here. And they're all clapping and saying, yes, you can, you can do this. And one of my team members, Jamie, is a, is a serious camper. And I said, can't we just go camping today? Can't we just do that? <laughs> <laughs> But here we are. So, and I'm just so happy. So, yeah. yeah. And I think one of the biggest things is is the accountability factor. I've co-authored two books, Beer Pairing um, and uh, CraftBeer.com Beer and Food Course. I could never have authored those on my own. So sometimes right. the way I get things done is is I pull people in where their opinion matters greatly to me, and I set something up where I'm accountable to them. 
And that is a great way. You just refer to your team, right? And so like, sure, you could have bailed, but then, oh my goodness, like right. who, who would you have let down? And also who helped you get, get you here today? Uh, we, we need each yeah. other and we need to hold each other accountable. And, mm -hmm. and that sometimes when you want to get something done and you don't know how to do it by yourself, ask somebody else to help you. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Increase your tribe. Get those people in there that can support you and they have your back and they can push you and you can be upset and they can still say you can do it and and you trust them and you know that they're right. So, yeah, like I have a friend in Chicago that this morning I woke up to a text that was probably about that long with a bunch of memes that says one of them was Beyonce and it says. I'm not bossy. I'm the boss. And, and just, just, you can do this. It's okay. Everything's great. So, yeah. So. Where are we? What are we doing next, Shane? I think we're just waiting for the 930 I mark. I think we're going to be able Kobe. to have some, yeah, we can, we can close out this session. And um, if there are navigation questions we can absolutely address them here but the exhibit hall is also live yes. um jamie is our team member in there right now and she's more than happy to help do that i'll probably pop into my personal one and we can start helping um with some navigation issues if we have any trouble with that but right. i think we're we can close this out okay yep next we have emily del bell and i believe uh karen hurts from uh, Holly Daily Brewing. That's been a little bit of a thing with us. It's like, we've got Julia Hers and Karen Hertz. And it's like, who are we talking about? <laughs> Karen has the key. Karen has the key. <laughs> right, so. And then I, well, real quickly, Hers in German is heart. It is, yes. Yeah. So that was kind of nice to find out. So anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Excellent, have a great Saturday, everybody. I'll see you through the sessions. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye-bye. Thank you.